So, on to the next generation, which clearly has a demanding task ahead of it. Our final two guests tonight are Omar Khan and Gwendolyn Morgan, both young legal aid lawyers. So, would you like to join me up here, Omar? Um, well, I had come here prepared with sort of a critique of the consultation on the refocusing the priorities um, that June mentioned. Um, but I spoke to Laura at about 5.30 and was under, uh, been, I've been given strict instructions to be utterly upbeat and optimistic, so <laughs> not that. Um, but, um, I mean, I do have some cause for optimism. Being part of Young Legal Aid Lawyers, we're a growing group with at least 30,000 <coughs> members across the country, and everybody has made very, very definite choices and chosen to represent the vulnerable, the voiceless, and, you know, victims. And, try to ensure that there is some kind of efforts made by our generation to redress imbalances in power and it's a, an incredibly stimulating career it's very 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 worthwhile and so, you know it feels like it's socially useful not just for your clients but by addressing inequalities you're improving things generally um, for society um, so in, in, in that consultation you mentioned at the start, in the forward, there's the reference to the fact that Britain spends £38 per capita on legal aid, whereas other countries such as Ireland, Ireland spends £8. And I just wanted to say that, you know, I, when I was in college, there was, in Ireland, there was absolutely no talk of the legal aid system. Everybody was shooting straight for corporate firms. Um, and I started to wonder, you know, what, what is the system like? And I've just read a report on on the system, and it's with those with that eight pounds, all that all that is available to people is a, a system which is incredibly limited in scope to just mainly ninety percent family and immigration. Um, in O'Donoghue and the Legal Aid Board, a case in two thousand and four, a client was waiting for twenty five months before her first appointment with a solicitor. Um, I think in December 2008, 42% of people have waited for four months before the first appointment. Um, and as I say, it's, you know, it's very, very limited in scope. There's no legal aid for housing. Um, and discrimination in, in society is rife. So it is incredibly important to preserve what we have and to appreciate the wonderful legal aid system that we have currently. Um, so, yeah, I'm cautiously optimistic. <laughs> Thanks, Gwendolyn. Um, I have to say thank you because um, when I, I just began in uh, criminal legal aid this June and um, very soon after I began we had a what was similar to a, a really a crisis meeting and um, it was because of best value tendering and really I, I had to reconsider my options and it felt like this was the end of quality in criminal legal aid and I spoke to people who I had uh, worked with prior to beginning this year um, in, who were working in criminal law and it really felt like this this was the end of it um, and I think that from the perspective of a practitioner what you need to have is just an element of job satisfaction and I have to say thank you to the Legal Services Commission and to Carolyn Regan who sat here today because they they did backtrack on their proposal for best value tendering. However, I just I, I want to make it clear that we cannot have best value tendering by the back door because it will it will make it unsustainable and it's there's already so much pressure in, in this area of legal aid, as there are in many other areas of legal aid as well. But I, I just feel that if we continue to hack away at, the, at the, the, the values that people have in, in this area, then we will not be able to continue. And there are many good people who I saw last year when I was in training who actually avoided coming into this area of law and they actually chose to go into, not into corporate law because they are two completely different industries, but they chose to enter other areas of, of um, 
other other graphics and, and other jobs. But the, I think that if what we need to do over here is, is we need to make sure that we get the message out, and it needs to start with the people who uh, control the budget for legal aid, and the, and the message needs to be that we su we support quality and. Um, and ultimately, that uh, well, just that legal aid is a sustainable area, and that there is a future for people who come into legal aid. Thank you very much. It's obvious future is to some extent safe in those hands. Um, so, firstly, I would like to thank, of course, all the guests for joining us tonight. And uh, tonight is really about celebrating what has been achieved uh, by Legal Aid so far and looking to the future. After the break, the debate will focus on the future, uh, looking in particular at social mobility within the profession. Uh, just on a personal note, to finish off, firstly, thank the speakers enormously. We promised that we'd finish by 8 o'clock the first half, and that was almost impossible to achieve, but we've managed that. Uh, just personally, I can say from my own life experience, 60 years, uh, exactly the same as legal aid. There are times when legal aid works fantastically well, doing sort of uh, domestic violence injunctions back in the sort of late 80s, early 90s. It was a real total satisfaction to be able to work for people where it's properly publicly funded, you can do a good job, you can get people to court, you can get the injunction, you can stop uh, violence in front of children and violence to vulnerable people. As if that is in any sense diminished, then obviously the world is a much poorer place. And clients who we acted for back then, and one of them was uh, recently murdered because Perhaps the protection system breaks down, her husband came round, found the address, 69 stab wounds, and perhaps if the system was working better, people like that would be better protected. So the, the profession you're in often literally becomes a matter of life and death, and I think legal aid can play its part in preserving life uh, in, in many contexts. So, uh, back to generalise then. So I think everybody in the room probably feels the future of legal aid is uncertain, the past has been full of achievements, and many of the people here tonight have contributed hugely to those achievements, but the future beckons. So it is a pleasure and an honour uh, to say to Legal Aid, this is your life uh, as we look to the future after the break. So thank you very much. For that.